This conference will now be recorded. All right, I got six o'clock. We should call this meeting to order. Thank you, everybody, for being here this evening. So, if everyone would please stand and remain standing, we'll start the evening off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Excuse me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Caldwell, would you please honor us for the convocation, please? Watch over him, the Lord. Keep everyone safe, Father. Let everyone get done what you want done in your will. We pray, Father, that this meeting is over. All will be and get home safe and sound. Bless all who attend and all who care about this town. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would please remain standing, we'll have a moment of silence for our neighbors who may have passed away. I have a Fred Josie, Leland Crumpler, and Margie Wright. Thanks so much. Please be seated. And if you would check your <coughs> cell phones, make sure you got them all vibrate. <coughs> and I'll ask the board if anybody has a conflict of interest, please let us know. I don't think anything that's on the agenda. Well, we shall get started. All right, first is the adoption of the agenda as it is. I have a motion to accept. Move to adopt. Second. All fair. Thank you. Uh, next up is public comments. We do have a couple of people that have signed up to speak. Uh, first up is Eddie Moore. Ernie. I'm sorry, Ernie Moore. All right. My name is Ernie Moore. I live at 200 Bayshore Drive. I'd like to first thank the board for allowing me to speak uh, tonight. I come to you tonight as a concerned resident of the Bayshore community in light of the recent criminal activity. I'm confident the police and the courts will take care of the suspects arrested. My concern tonight is focused on the appearance of one particular property in our neighborhood associated with recent criminal activity, 110 Bayshore Drive owned by Manatee Investments Limited Partnership. First, the property owner needs to screen tenants better for the safety of our community. Second, the tenant or property owner needs to clean up the property. When I first moved to Bayshore, this property was not the eyesore it is today. There are junk vehicles in the yard, which I believe is a violation of city ordinance. The storage building is in need of repair as well as the trailer. And there is also campers on the premises that appears to be used as living quarters which I believe, too, is a violation of city ordinance. In the past, other residents have been ordered to remove junk vehicles and campers and appear to be used for living quarters from the property immediately. My question and concern is, why haven't these rules been enforced against the property owner? I'm here to ask the town to enforce these rules as they apply to everyone in Cape Carter. The residents of Bayshore are tired of seeing this junky place every time we drive down Bayshore. I take pride in home ownership, as most Bayshore residents do, and we should not be subject to such appearances. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, next is Jonathan Lucas. Good evening. I'm Jonathan Lucas. I live at 120 Sutton Drive in Star Hill. I have three children, ages seven, four, and one. And um, although my children did not sign that letter that went to the town manager regarding a playground equipment in the town, uh, if they had known about it, I think they would have signed it. That's not what I wanted to talk about tonight, though. Uh, I wanted to reference the most recent email that went out to the town. Uh, it also about parks, but in a different capacity. Uh, the email said in one of the paragraphs, additionally, town officials are exploring grant funding opportunities to acquire additional parkland in Cape Carteret with a goal to create a new park 
along the multi-use path and eventually develop a larger comprehensive park for our residents and visitors to enjoy. Stay tuned. Tonight, I am proposing a large, approximately 30 acre, uh, minimum of 10 acre nature park for this town, similar to what Emerald Isle intentionally made for its town in, in both McLean Spell Park and also Emerald Isle Woods Park. And I think that we know somebody in this town who would be familiar with how those processes went. Uh, this is in keeping with the surveys done last year. Uh, the word cloud uh, prominently displayed things like more trees and more green spaces. Such a park would preserve habitat for wildlife and showcase the unique native ecosystems that we are blessed with here at the North Carolina coast. Uh, by definition, it would have a minimal impervious surface content, uh, which thus protects the water quality in this beautiful sounds and rivers that are what draws people here to this area. Uh, would facilitate healthy recreation for the residents of the town, a healthy outdoor recreation. And depending on location, uh, would have the utility of providing wooded trails, which could serve as um, aesthetically pleasing foot and bike travel corridors between different parts of the town. Uh, the details can be worked out, uh, whether we do bike trails, potentially disc golf, an arboretum, uh, projects that could be supported by community groups like the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Uh, but the grant funding for something like this is out there. It's been done in Emerald Isle uh, multiple times. Uh, and the grants are there, both for land acquisition and park development itself. So I am asking the Board of Commissioners to direct the town manager to del deliberately pursue this, um, both identifying a parcel or multiple parcels that are adjoining, uh, and then attempt to recruit a willing seller. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. That's all I have for public comment. Uh, next up is the planning board report. Uh, Sir Wax, are you giving that tonight? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, people of Cape Carteret. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Sarah Wax. I'm speaking on behalf of our chair, uh, Hall, who couldn't be here tonight. So at our January planning board meeting, we discussed our interest uh, in providing more recreational opportunities for children in our community, much along the lines of um, what Mr. Lucas had just spoken about. So well-done parks can increase property values and promote that sense of community that we're all looking for. Um, outdoor play is also imperative for proper development uh, and health of our youth. So as a dietitian in the Army, uh, we were often reminded that 75% 75, 75 of America's youth are unable to serve in the military because they didn't graduate high school, they had criminal records, or they were physically unfit. So as a patriotic town like we are, um, I know that we want to foster a strong, healthy foundation for our children by providing a place for kids to play safely and to stay out of trouble. So at our last meeting, it was suggested that a committee could be formed, which includes town leadership um, and also stakeholders, uh, to make those recommendations to the board based on our discussions and research. So we would include input from the surrounding neighborhoods and help the town manager find those grant funding opportunities uh, that Mr. Lucas mentioned. So we would like to focus our efforts foremost on those non-waterfront parks initially, especially um, Bahia and Quailwood properties, as these are the lots probably going to be most eligible for grants in our town. Long term, the committee could assist with identifying pieces of land to purchase with grant funding if desired. Uh, just as they mentioned earlier, um, the trailhead property for the multi-use path would be another example of that. So, of course, all of this is pending your guidance and insight tonight, and I'm not going to belabor it because it is on the agenda, so Frank will lead the discussion. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Next up is the consent agenda. A motion or any discussion? Motion to adopt. Second. All right. All there. Look, Mr. Waters. That would be. Okay. All right. So I should see. <laughs> I don't want to miss anybody. 
Uh, next up, resolution authorizing design contract for final sales from the Cape Carteret Trail. Uh, thank you, Mayor Baker. Commissioners, uh, I'm pleased to present to you tonight a resolution that would authorize a design contract uh, for the final uh, roughly one mile segment uh, of the Cape Carteret Trail, essentially from Arden Oaks up to Highway 58 along Taylor and Ocean Road and then back down 58 toward uh, Mac Daddy's. Um, the goal uh, at this point is to construct this last segment of the trail uh, later this summer and therefore have a full three and a half mile loop around the entire triangle available for use by our residents and property owners, uh, hopefully later this year. Uh, what you have before you tonight is a resolution that would authorize a design contract with Summit Design and Engineering Services. Uh, they're a firm out of Raleigh. Uh, it is the same firm that completed work previously on your uh, land use plan and your um, unified development ordinance. Uh, in the last couple of years. They have a separate group that does design work for uh, civil engineering projects. Um, they have a lot of experience in these types of projects and have different offices spread around the state and other places in the country. The, the total amount of the contract is $49,000. Uh, it would include design services, permitting, bidding assistance, and limited construction administration services. Um, again, uh, if the board approves this tonight, uh, our goal is to get them started on the design work really as soon as possible, uh, try to get the design finalized in the next few months and be able to come back to the board, uh, hopefully late spring, early summer with a construction contract. We have some of the, de of the survey work associated with this portion of the trail already completed. Um, there's a small area basically north of the Forest Service properties on both roads that we'll need to do some additional surveying. So there will likely be some other minor surveying costs, but there's um, a good bit of that work already done. So we'll be working hard to hopefully come back to you with a construction contract. The trail will be nearly identical uh, to the segments that you see in place right now uh, along Taylor and Ocean Road and Highway 58, 10 foot wide asphalt path. Uh, there are a couple of ditch crossings on Highway 58, just a little bit north of Mac Daddy's uh, near VFW Road. We would expect to probably do a, a couple of 15 foot, uh, linear foot uh, long uh, wooden boardwalks to cross those ditch features. Been through a lot of the environmental review with different agencies over the last few weeks, preparing to submit a grant application later this week. So I think we're in good shape from that standpoint. Right now, you have a total of about $407,000 available in the capital project ordinance uh, for this work. Uh, this $49,000 contract would come out of that amount. Um, that's primarily derived from state grant funds. There's also some fundraising and some donation uh, proceeds included in that account as well. Um, if the board approves this contract, and by the time we get to construction, we should have at least around $350,000 available for construction. I'm hopeful that that will be sufficient uh, to construct the remaining one to 1.2 mile segment. Um, we are submitting a grant application later this week, also for $100,000 that would augment the funding available for this. So um, certainly we'll come back to you at the appropriate time with construction contracts and hopefully with good news that we've got the money. And if not, we'll come up with a strategy to, to deal with that at the appropriate time. I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you have about this and I'm happy to be at this point and hopefully bringing this project to full completion soon. I have one question. Uh, what, what level of construction administration do you kind of see them providing? Yeah, it's very limited. They've got a couple of visits included in here. Um, I will say that given the experience we had with the last segment on Taylor Notion earlier this summer, um, I expect both myself and our public works director to be more hands-on uh, with that going forward and may actually add a little bit more of the construction administration services, but want to make sure we've got regular testing of the materials there, the right depths, the right quantities, and so forth. So I want to avoid the issues we experienced on the last segment. All right. Thank you. Frank, I got a question. Have you ever used this company before for design work or anything? Um, I, I personally have not, but they're a reputable company and, and have similar experience. Uh, one more question. Did you set a deadline for them to complete this work? Um, there's no hard deadline, but they're certainly aware of the desire to bid this out for summertime construction and get it done. And we can certainly stress that. I think they think they understand the urgency. Is it normal to include a deadline in that type of contract? Um, it, it, it's certainly not um, out of the ordinary to do that, and we can stipulate a deadline. I mean, I've essentially communicated to them the schedule right. that I outlined in the packet, and I feel confident about their ability to meet that, but we can include a hard deadline if you'd like. 
Well, as, as long as you're comfortable with it, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Understood. I just wanted to ask that question. Thank you. Any more questions or discussion? What a motion. I'll make a motion we adopt this resolution authorizing the sign contract. I'll second. All in favor? General? Just as an aside, as we talked about at the uh, January 30th budget planning meeting, I am still exploring the potential acquisition of the parcel uh, at the far tip of the triangle at Taylor Notion and 58. And um, if we are successful in acquiring that, that would be incorporated into the design work. So I'll hopefully be coming back to you with some progress on that effort um, along the way. Thank you. Next up is resolution authorizing the town acquisition. Uh, yeah, this is um, basically the, the second iteration of uh, this issue. We talked in September uh, about creating a new position to handle basically all aspects of the town's development services, uh, zoning administration, uh, sign ordinance, floodplain management, really stormwater management, all of the issues associated with new development in the community. Um, it included code enforcement services as well. So we've basically been operating without a dedicated person for that since about the time that I got here this past summer. In September, I came to you with a proposal to add a position um, that was very similar to this and would provide all of those services and would also provide additional assistance to the town manager, special projects uh, as they may be uh, necessary or assigned uh, going forward. Uh, at that time, uh, the board requested that we attempt to recruit someone to provide building inspection services uh, for the town. In addition to these services, uh, we went through a pretty uh, extensive recruitment process in the fall. Uh, unfortunately, it was not possible to identify a qualified individual for that position. Um, with that, uh, I discussed with you at the January 30th budget planning meeting the potential of adding a position somewhere along the lines of what we discussed back in September. That's essentially what you have here before you tonight for your consideration. Um, I've changed the title of the position. I've called it a town planner. Um, it's really just a catch-all name for all of those development-related services. Um, essentially looking for someone to provide the services I mentioned, zoning administration, floodplain management, stormwater management, um, really hopefully do a, an improved job with customer service, very responsive, timely um, assistance to developers, to property owners who are trying to move forward with their projects, and then also the code enforcement services. I think, quite frankly, we need to do a better job uh, on those services, um, and this new position would enable us to do that. I've structured the position uh, slightly different, but pretty similar to what you saw in September um, after taking your feedback from the last meeting. Um, it's essentially a very similar position. Uh, I've included in the resolution a proposed starting salary somewhere in the $35,000 to $55,000 annual range. Um, it would really depend on the qualifications of the individual that's ultimately selected. Um, and certainly we'll be trying to make sure that we're competitive and can attract a good quality person for that. So I'd ask for your consideration uh, for that position again, um, realizing that we need to do something better um, in those services. Um, as we discussed at your January 30th budget planning meeting, uh, I have preliminarily plugged in sufficient funding uh, for this position in the projection for next year. Obviously we'll refine that as we go through the budget process over the next few months. One of the options that I included in here was to potentially consider contracting with one of the other smaller towns um, here in the western end of the county, simply as a way to defer, defray the costs that are associated with the position. That's an option we can consider. Uh, if you're interested in that, I think if you approve the resolution tonight, you should assume that the town is fully funding this position. And then if there are any arrangements that are made later on, those would essentially be a bonus and help reduce the town's expenses going forward. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, there's a resolution included in your packet, um, and I hope that we can somehow find a, a good solution uh, for this, uh, for these services, um, and hopefully find a good quality individual to assist the town. Um, we just need to do a better job on these things, I think. Any questions, comments? Yes, I have quite a few here, Mayor. Uh, not so much questions, uh, concerns, I guess is a better way of putting it. Uh, 
I think it's no secret on with the board members how I stand on this. I, I, I can't support. Uh, I can support the position in its entirety. We've had this position. It's been it's, it's, it's came under different names, a hybrid position, part time PD. It's, it's been through the gauntlet. OK, the funding is there for this position, but I cannot support funding the position. If we're going to sublet this employee to other towns. And I got a few things here I just want to throw out at you. Uh, first of all, I take great pride in Cape Carteret being a self-sufficient town. I think our citizens pay, pay their fair share of taxes and, and we've used that tax, those tax dollars to create and, 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 and serve this town with basic services and expanding on those services and I'm proud of that. Uh, we have the money to fully fund this position without sharing it, the cost to other towns. Uh, I know some people here don't know this story, but uh, one of those towns uh, incorporated in 1999 to pre prevent Cape Carteret from annexing them, and now they want us to furnish them service. I think if they should uh, approach the county with any shared services of that nature, I don't think we need to be in that type of business to share our services with any town. Um, they should, if they want this service, those towns should get together, in my opinion, fund it themselves. We're perfectly capable of funding it for our town and our town only. Uh, Cedar Point, for instance, has a tax base and businesses to afford basically all the services we provide. They choose not to. Um, we're a sovereign town and we don't need the help from any other towns, in my opinion. Uh, the liability, the logistics of, of uh, would be a nightmare to sub an employee to another town, in my opinion. Uh, and I personally would have would find it difficult to uh, partner with uh, one of those towns in, in, in light of, of some recent uh, things that's going on in the county. Uh, that said, I would gladly support hiring this employee, Frank, with those duties that you have outlined as long as it's just for our town and our town only. That's just the way I feel about it. So, I think that's certainly an option um, as we discussed at the January 30th meeting. I think the money is there to cover the position. And I think really, regardless of how you feel about it, you should assume that that's the approach anyway. And then anything else that might be negotiated in the future would really just be a bonus. But if that's the board's will, we can absolutely make that work. Well, uh, I have a problem assuming it's not a trust factor, so don't get me wrong. Sure. But there's three sentences in this resolution that I would want to omit to, to ensure that we don't are not tempted to provide those services to another town. Well, we're, we're only approving tonight the position. It says on the second page that if you did decide to contract with one of the towns, that you would any proposed agreements with one or more of these towns would be presented for formal board consideration. Uh, excuse me. The resolution resolution here states. Whereas the town is seeking to contract with other nearby towns and provide similar services for these towns, whereas the town manager is seeking a new position to provide these services to Cape Carteret and participating nearby towns, be it further resolved, the Board of Commissioners that town managers hereby authorized to negotiate a contract with nearby towns. Okay. Those are the three. Because <clears throat> I, I read. We're here to pass a resolution, am I correct? Yeah, so you're both right. <laughs> um, and what I would say is that if there are arrangements with other towns made, which at this point, there are no arrangements that are made with other towns. There have been some informal conversations about that. But if there are, then I would certainly come back to the board at a later meeting with an actual contract with all the terms and stipulations. Excuse so, me. I invite you to, re to look at the YouTube video of Monday night's meeting in Pelletier where the mayor is quoted as saying he's waiting on you, the town manager. He didn't break you by name. Sure. to come to him with the cost to provide that service to his town. It's on their Facebook. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, yeah, so well, well, the, uh, let me finish if I can finish the comment. So we can absolutely move forward and we can delete those phrases from the resolution if that's the board's will going forward. So I think the, the most important thing for you all to consider is 
uh, to move forward with hiring a person to provide these services so that we can provide the best possible service for our residents, for our property owners. If the board has concerns about working with the other towns, I'm absolutely happy to not pursue that if that's the board's will. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I, I don't disagree with you. I, I actually agree with what you say on it, if, if we're going to fund it, let's just the, my fear, my hesitation is that we have enough work to to do all of this, to, to employ this person full time, and then now he's splitting his time, or she is splitting their time. And so I, I do kind of agree with Commissioner Martin that it would be good to just go ahead and get this just within Cape Carteret. Let's just do this, and then, I don't know, maybe we see where we are a year or two from now. But I think initially I'm I'm very supportive of the position. I'm not too supportive of giving it to another town. Understood. Yeah. Sounds like the two of you are on yeah, this. Yeah, I think we're on the same page with that. I, I agree with that. If, if we have full-time work and we were talking about three towns, now we're talking about 13 hours a week for our town. Agreed. So unless we want to kick this dead horse anymore, I'd like to make a resolution to pass this with the amended language we just discussed. Absolutely. So then I guess I would suggest that you delete the second to the last whereas. Uh, there's um, three, there's three whereas. Yeah. So. yeah it's, well, um, I would suggest deleting the second to last whereas in the very last whereas, um, delete the phrase and participating nearby towns, and then delete the be it further resolved section. Does that address the concerns? I would, I would, I would add to uh, Commissioner uh, Morgan's uh, motion any wording of nearby towns be stricken from the resolution. Understood. Simple. Yeah, that, that works for me. Okay. All right, so the motion is, you would just please repeat and clarify. I can make a motion to accept the resolution with the language of dealing with nearby towns removed. I'll second. All right. Any more discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next up is the ordinance amending Title 7 traffic code. Uh, thank you uh, for your support for that. Uh, item number 12 um, is a, just a simple ordinance that would delegate the establishment of no parking zones to the town manager uh, in the future. Uh, back at the December meeting, uh, you all approved the creation of a new no parking zone on Manatee Street uh, at the request of some nearby property owners. As part of that discussion, the board indicated that you'd like to delegate that responsibility to the town manager in the future. Uh, this ordinance amendment presented for your consideration tonight would accomplish that and would essentially delegate those to the manager. Um, certainly, if there are any new no parking signs or zones authorized, I'll report those to the Board of Commissioners uh, in a timely manner and make you aware of those. I uh, would simply just provide for a more efficient process. There are currently uh, five areas, including the one we talked about in December, uh, that have no parking signs right now, um, in addition to other defined locations in the ordinance. Um, those would simply be codified and maintained on a list by the town clerk. And then if there are any new locations added, we'll add that to that list and, again, report to the board um, as any new locations are added or deleted. So. Questions? I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to adopt this. Um, I'll uh, make a motion to adopt the ordinance amending traffic code, delegate the sign parking signs to the town manager. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Next up is the uh, ordinance <coughs> amending. I don't know my Roman numerals. Is that six or four? Nine. Nine. Okay, I'll get there. I'll, uh, General regulations to allow parking at town parks by park visitors only. Uh, this ordinance is presented uh, based on some recent conversations with Commissioner Martin. Um, he had expressed concern about uh, residents or property owners parking at some of the park facilities when they're not using the park facilities. And so clearly um, the town's 
uh, effort to provide parking facilities at town parks is so that people who are visiting the parks can enjoy those parks. This simply includes language that states that, that the parking facilities at the town parks are for the use of park patrons. Um, I have included some language that essentially says if it's parked there for more than two hours uh, without the uh, owners of the vehicle being present at the park facility, that would constitute a parking violation. Uh, like our other parking violations in the ordinance, it's a $50 penalty. Um, it's really one of those ordinances where, in all honesty, is, is difficult to enforce but conveys the town's expectations uh, to our residents, to our property owners, to our park visitors. Um, it's the kind of thing where if there are violations, um, as we often do, we would take the approach of educating the person uh, who is uh, in offense and hopefully that would resolve the concern. So this would address that concern. Certainly, if you think two hours is not the proper duration, if you think it's one hour or three hours or any other time, that can be amended by the board uh, at your discretion. But this was my attempt to address that concern, um, hopefully in an effective manner. If we were to adopt this, would, would signs be posted at the parks specifying that? Yeah, yeah, we would certainly add signage to that effect and make it clear that it's for park visitors only. I personally had no idea that this is even a problem. I mean, if it is going on, I, I certainly support that. And people won't be parking there, not using the parks. Yeah, I brought this to uh, Frank's attention because I've been getting numerous phone calls and uh, the limited parking that we have at our parks, for instance, Manatee, the boat ramp, and, uh, and other waterfront parks. Uh, it could be a problem when you only got four or five parking places as it is. So I brought it to Frank's attention, asked him to put it on the agenda. I think he, he did very well in presenting it. So uh, I would definitely uh, uh, make a motion to approve it. Motion and second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I think this is one of those that's just sort of tough to enforce, but I, I do get it. I mean, I've been down to the pier and a, a handful of people and way more cars there than people. So I, I do get the, I do get the reason for this. I think it's, I think it's probably a good idea. I realize it's, it's challenge for the town to enforce this, but I do think it's a good idea. So, um, yeah, I, I support this. And, and it's certainly going to be complaint driven enforcement, right. right? That's the only way that we're going to know it. And, like everything else, I hope that we can just have a simple conversation with the person and resolve the concern. Well, I know sometimes that when I'm putting my boat in, there'll be people that will park down there to ride with other people that are on the boat. And that's part of an issue. They're gone for several hours, but getting there with somebody down the boat. Yeah, yeah, I think clearly the, the boat ramp is different. Those folks are using the, the facility uh, there. I think this is geared more towards some of the pedestrian-oriented parks um, and general parks. Yeah. All right. A motion to second. Any more discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Next up is creation of ad hoc advisory committee to recommend specific park improvements that uh, Ms. Wax mentioned. Yeah, so um, as uh, Planning Board member Wax mentioned, uh, this was a topic of conversation for the Planning Board uh, at their January meeting. Uh, it's also an issue we discussed at your January 30th budget planning workshop meeting. Uh, there seemed to be interest uh, in the board uh, at that meeting in creating some sort of advisory group to explore park improvements, uh, primarily at the Bahia Lane Park, but at also some of the other non waterfront parks in the town. Um, I took the liberty of suggesting a, a recommended makeup uh, for this committee, um, as well as a scope of work. I believe it's consistent with some of the discussions that both the Planning Board and the Board of Commissioners have had. Um, however, if you would like to adjust the membership or the scope of work in any way, uh, by all means, the Board should do that here tonight. Um, essentially, what I included um, is a membership that would have eight members total. Uh, one member of this board uh, or the mayor, uh, two members of the planning board, one member of the Star Hill North Property Owners Association, um, again, a lot of discussion about the Bahia Lane Park, uh, and one member of the Star Hill Property Owners Association, close proximity to the Star Hill North area, one additional resident of Star Hill North, and then two other residents really from anywhere in Cape Carteret. And those folks could be from those same neighborhoods or they could be from old Cape Carteret or 
any location in town. I felt like that was a, a reasonable representation of the community. Uh, certainly you can adjust that in any way you think better represents the concerns of the community. Um, my understanding uh, from the discussion is that there have been concerns expressed uh, by residents in the Star Hill North area around the Bahia Lane Park in the future. Uh, one of the key goals for the committee would be to work through those issues and hopefully make recommendations that would be supported uh, by that community, hence the reason that it's a little heavier on the Star Hill North representation. In, in terms of the scope of work, um, it's specifically to identify desired park improvements at the town's uh, existing parks, again, focused on the non-waterfront parks. Those would be Community Park right behind this building, uh, the Bahia Lane Park, the Quailwood Park, and also a small park-like feature in front of the Public Works building um, on the uh, Taylor Notion Road along the bicycle trail. Um, identify any neighborhood concerns, uh, primarily in the Star Hill North area, get basically come up with a plan that folks will be pleased with and be able to support. Um, also uh, identify any other parcels of land that it might be appropriate for the town to explore acquiring in the future along the lines of Mr. Lucas's comments earlier. If there's any specific parcels that would make a good park, um, that certainly would be a reasonable thing for this group to discuss. Ultimately, make recommendations back to you for the final decisions. Uh, realistically, I think um, any land acquisition is going to need to be uh, completed with significant grant funding uh, in the future. Um, clearly, that takes some time. Um, if there are recommendations for specific playground equipment or other improvements, uh, we would certainly seek grant funding for those improvements. Uh, depending on the expense of some of those things, we may be able to include that in your budget that you'll get in May and, and approve in June. So um, that's the, the recommendation for you tonight. And again, um, that was my attempt at being helpful. If you think the membership or the scope should be changed in any way, absolutely, we can do that. So I think I'd like to see those two seats reserved for somebody other than Star Hill North. I understand that a lot of this affects Star Hill North, but the money that's going to get spent there is going to be from everybody in the town. And if those two seats can come from any neighborhood, then we could have a Star Hill only recommendation. And I'd like to have the voice of some of the other communities in the town. We can absolutely make that change. If that's Unless we like think to. that we can't get volunteers for that. I mean, but that's my only concern. So are uh, you asking to add? No, I'm not asking to add to. I'm trying to limit the two additional seats okay. to not be additional okay. members from Store Hill. Okay. Yeah, and, and ultimately I would come back. We would advertise for individuals who are interested in serving on this committee, and you all would make the actual appointments and could consider that at that time. And we can stipulate that they're from other neighborhoods if that's the board's uh, wish. I just have two quick things. First of all, since uh, the scope of the committee's work is basically more or less limited to Bahia Lane, Quailwood Community Park, and the Community Park and Taylor Notion, I think uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Watts would be uh, the commissioner I would like to see head this ad hoc uh, committee up. He is so inclined. Also, I think it'd be very important. Uh, to put a time limit on this committee to come back before the board, not to stretch it out for a year or two. I mean, give them a gracious amount of time, ample time, whatever, to fulfill the scope of the work that's outlined in this agenda. But do establish, you know, uh, if Commissioner Watts is over to be, I, I think it's imperative to have a. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly open to this. Uh, you know, I've been an advocate for the parks um, so I'm, I'm certainly open to this and, and I'm open to whatever you, you want the makeup of the committee to be. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, and I, and I, I, do, I, I do agree with the timeline too, because yeah, the time, these things the could time, go on forever. And, yeah. I've seen committees that, yeah. that, that exist for decades and never, you know, so I, I would point out though, uh, Commissioner Watts is, I think I spoke to you about this. This is probably the fourth or fifth time that this has been tried. Yeah. So good, uh, good luck. Yeah, uh, I hope you can hope the committee can come back to the board with with something we can uh, do over there. It's certainly been tried, but didn't mean to draft you, by the way. That's that's OK. <laughs> that's OK. That's all right. So do we 
are we, what was the makeup? What was the composition change? I don't. Pretty much just, just it, taking one of the representatives, like the way you had it lined up for Sparrows. Well, as I understood, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner Morgan, um, the, the two residents that come from any neighborhood in the community, that they would specifically come from some neighborhood other than the Star Hill North or Star Hill area. Is that correct? That's correct. So it would be Old Cape Carteret or Bay Shore. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So. yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We'll advertise and hopefully get some people that you know, want to volunteer. So if you're comfortable with this approach, I'll just take your consensus then and we'll advertise and then come back to you all at a future meeting with the appointments. And in terms of uh, duration for this group, six months, nine months, three months, is there anything? Uh, I think I think, I think think uh, Commissioner Watts could probably get a feel for what the work, the scope of the work is going to be during this first meeting, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he's right. I, I think that's probably a, I, I don't. I'm afraid six is not going to be enough, but then again, I don't want to go to, so yeah, I, I let's okay. get into it and then we'll see. We can figure that out. Sure. Yeah. And I'll certainly, we'll announce that to everyone. So. Do we need a motion? For the well, just a consensus because then we'll select a vote and all of them. People want to okay. see if we have. Yeah. Go from there. <laughs> but we will get some people. Not sure what I got into. I mean, you, usually, you, usually they wait till I go to the bathroom before I get nominated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up is an appointment of planning board. We have one vacancy. Let's see, last time we did a people put a choice in their head to pass the ground or because it's just one. Yeah, that's one. what we did last time was write write your name down and write your candidate. Write name down, pass it, and see That's fine. Okay. I'll be there. I don't Heather, do you, do you have, have a ballot available? Can we, can we have? I'm not trying to sway a vote by no means, uh, commissioners, but can we have? Can I make just one brief comment before we sure. go into the vote? I just want to point out the fact that there's, uh, at this time, there's no representative from Bayshore Park on that planning board, several from Star Hill. Uh, since Mr. Williams is leaving, there's one, I think, Mr. King from this the yeah, old Cape sure. Carteret. I just wanted to point that out. I'm not trying to sway the vote. Well, we actually, we have a ballot that uh, the town clerk will provide to each of you, and you can fill that out if, if you like. So. I have one question. I understand that. Go ahead, Dollar. Keep my written right. All right, this one we're voting on tonight, their, their term expired basically now this month. We have another one expiring in May. Correct. And then we have the other three all expire in February 6th. Correct. 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 Is that to get like two of them at the same time and three of them at the same time? Yeah, that, that's my recommendation to you. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how, but somehow we got off the schedule just by a few months. And I'm just trying to get us on that May schedule for those positions. Um, and so it's a relatively minor adjustment that will get us back on track. And then as you saw in the written materials, there is another vacancy in May. And uh, we expect to advertise for applicants for that position and come back to you in May with another um, appointment for that. You got one more coming up in May. So, I mean, basically, what we're looking at is this they all have opportunities. Yeah, they do. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, I, I mean, again, I'm not saying, but I mean, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, essentially, you're replacing the entire planning board in the next year. Yeah, is really what it comes down to. And there, yeah. every one of these candidates, I read their applications before, previously, and they're all very qualified, very much qualified to serve on that board. I'd like to thank all of them because that's that's what makes this town work. Is people who volunteer, and like you guys showing up tonight. I, I love seeing people there. I love to see it packed. Is your town? 
I did. <laughs> You're not going to charge us for doing that, are you? You announce the results. That's right. Our town attorney, who <clears throat> Mr. Donald Whalen got the majority of the votes. Okay, uh, last time, uh, Frank, the the ballots were read with all the commissioners and who they voted for. Make it public, public record. I can certainly do that. Um, Steve Martin and Charlie Morgan voted for Don Peel. The remaining commissioners voted for Donald Whalen, Jr. And these are public record if anybody wants to inspect them afterwards. They're recorded. So. Thank you. We will reach out to Mr. Whalen and get him oriented to the planning board in the near future. Um, I did want to let the, the board and the community know that there will be no planning board meeting for the month of February. So the next one will be on March 21st. Um, and we'll certainly communicate that to Mr. Whalen. Uh, Mr. Bruce Williamson's term expired um, earlier this month. All right, next up is the town manager report. Uh, I've got several items in the written report. Um, I'll just kind of note a couple of the, of the more significant issues and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about the other items in the report or really anything else uh, going on in the town right now. Uh, Ryan Hutchinson, our public works director, is working on a list of street segments uh, for the 2023 street resurfacing contract. Um, hope to come back to you all uh, either in March or April with a recommendation to hopefully resurface about one mile of town streets at that time. If there are specific segments that you're aware of that need some attention, please feel free to share those with me um, between now and, and the next meeting. Um, looking forward to getting that done. We um, have secured the CAMA permit for the Ferry Landing Park bulkhead. Um, we are in the process of um, waiting for the building inspect the building permit uh, for that work. I hope that we'll have that in the next few days and the contractors ready to go and get started on that work. Uh, Public Works has removed the fence from that area. And so hopefully we'll get started very soon on that work. Um, we're also uh, planning to demolish the existing building uh, at Ferry Landing Park um, in the near future. Um, Commissioner Martin has been talking with um, interested individuals who would donate labor and materials to construct a new gazebo at that location. Uh, Ryan Hutchinson and I have talked about the possibility of town staff demolishing uh, the building. I think that's something we can accomplish fairly easily uh, with town staff, probably about a three day job, uh, give or take. So we'll be working on that unless someone has any concerns about that, but I think it'd be a nice improvement for the park uh, going forward. Um, Appreciate the work that Public Works has been doing on Highway 24, just trying to get everything cleaned up and looking a little tidier out there. They're just about done with that. We'll try to stay on top of that uh, in the future. We have finalized the date for the fall festival. Um, we are uh, planning for Saturday, November the 4th. Um, and uh, myself and other town staff, Barbara Owens, will be working to hopefully make that um, a more significant event for the town and really the town's sig signature event going forward, as we talked about at your meeting on um, January 30th. A couple of other things that are not uh, mentioned uh, in the written materials, I uh, just wanted to point out, I mentioned the planning board meeting um, canceled for next week. Um, we are... Um, working on the 110 Bayshore property uh, that the gentleman mentioned earlier today. So we'll be working with the affected property owners and um, trying to clean things up there. Um, I did want to let the board and the community know um, that uh, our police chief, Ed Preston, uh, is no longer working uh, for the town of Cape Carteret. Um, over the last few weeks, it became apparent that it was probably not a good fit going forward. Um, so we've separated that relationship. Um, I will regroup and begin uh, efforts to recruit a new police chief in the future. So I wanted to let everyone know that. Um, 
Lieutenant John Eschbach uh, is our acting police chief again, and I appreciate his willingness to take on that role and to help us out during this transition. So wanted to report that uh, to everyone. Um, if you have questions about anything else uh, in the materials or anything else with the town, please let me know that. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions for Frank? If not, we're on to commissioner reports. We'll start with Commissioner Martin. Yes, um, as Frank uh, was talking about the gazebo, I want to, with all the bad news, it's going through town and especially in Bayshore lately, I think I've got some good news I want to share with the town. Um, Sand Dollar Homes has graciously agreed to build a picnic shelter slash gazebo, uh, have their in-house architect design it, build it, turnkey, no charge to the town. Only thing they ask in return is a simple plaque stating that they donated this, just as John Ritchie did the stage out here. Talking about John Ritchie has called me and said that he's planning on putting a roof up on the stage so the guitar players can keep in tune uh, in the hot heat. And uh, I think he's going to pay for that out of pocket also. So those two good, good things for the town. Um, one last thing, I want to apologize for getting too loud during some of the discussions here. I was took it very personal about our... Uh, being a self-sufficient town, I apologize if I offended anyone. Uh, I love this town, and I'm going to take up for it at every chance that I get. Thank you. John? Frank, I just wanted to let you know I appreciate your work with all that you've had going on recently. Um, and thank you. That's all I have. Jim? I had to uh, Commissioner Wolf on more than just stated. Um, you know, coming in here, you always give you 110%, and I personally appreciate it as a citizen. We also appreciate, uh, appreciate it as a board member as well. And I'm sure the audience and uh, members of this town, citizens of this town, agree with that. Um, I just uh, I appreciate all the, the town staff and what they're doing. I, I can't say it every time, but I see a lot of work. Folks are doing what they've seen in the past. And thank you for what you're doing, everyone. <clears throat> thank you. I just want to also thank Frank and the town staff for everything you're doing. <laughs> and I'll tell you, Frank, the, the budget workshop we had a couple of weeks ago is probably the most productive one I've set on in ten or seven years I've been up here on this board. And I really appreciate that. I think we got a lot accomplished that day. And just thank you for that and for everything you're doing. And thank all the town staff. No, I was saying for everybody else, it always gets to me. I can't really say much. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. The, the, that, that budget uh, workshop was, that was great. Um, that was the, I learned the most, felt like we all contributed the most. Um, it was only my second time doing it. So uh, that was, that, the bar is set high now. So um, that's all I have. All right. And I reiterate that as well. I mean, coming from one town, they had an awesome town manager. That's how we, we did our budgets, and so it was, it was refreshing to go back to that type of professional. And just a couple of things I'd like to sort of highlight. Number one was the DOT had a meeting uh, about the traffic last week. And I, I don't know if any of y'all were there, but uh, very, very well attended. A lot of people were there, mostly from the Peltier and North area, because you know, they've got issues. And we all have issues, but uh, it really was disappointing to me uh, the fact that they pretty much just, they're given the appearance that they're starting up. In other words, we're, we're collecting data. We don't know what we're going to do. We don't know what we're going to do. And I think when they made the phrase that uh, we probably won't see anything until 2050, the air sort of went out of the room, you know, because that's, that's down the road quite a ways. And I, I was hoping they would, you know, have some more plans or, or something a little more finite that we could have looked at. So just a little disappointed in, in that. So really nothing to report from any of that. Um, I would like to just bring up to the people, if you live and you have power in your backyard like I do, uh, make sure you're not putting fences up or anything that can impede the ability of the power company. We had that issue. They, were, they had to come through my yard to get to the power pole because 
the uh, way to get through is blocked up with a fence and bushes have been planted. So uh, I think they're going to start a thing coming around looking at properties and stuff and making sure that they can access their right of ways. And it's just a matter of, you know, being a little commonsensical of don't put something under a power line if you don't want it to disappear. Pretty simple. Because, you know, that's that's the most important thing we got is, is being able to get <coughs> to get to utilities. And as a utility guy, I, 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 nothing more frustrating than you're trying to do a job and you can't get to it, especially if we have a storm or something. And, you know, time is very critical for power to get it back on. And I uh, just, once again, we have such an awesome staff, such a great job. And thank you, Frank, for the job you've been doing. Uh, Frank's job is to bring us ideas and solutions and for us to pick. So we may not agree with, with the solutions he presents us, but he's giving us choices. And that's his job, and I think he's doing a great job of it. And I think everybody on this board is here because we love our town, just like uh, Steve has said. And, and we may express it differently, but that expression is genuine, and I, and I have nothing but respect for that. So thank you, gentlemen. And uh, we're going to go into a closed session now. Uh, you're more welcome to wait around. If you want to stay on, what we're going to do is close when we come back. But I'll have to entertain a motion now to come out of the regular meeting to go into the closed session. I'll make that motion. A second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you so much for coming. I love seeing people. Appreciate <clears throat> I get this man to come to my shows.